You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or on our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 16th, 2021, which happens to be my birthday, so it's going to be super not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we thank our lucky stars every day that we're not Tennessee. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Happy birthday, darling. Oh, Happy thank birthday. you very much. Yes, today, July 16th, is my birthday. It's also it my late mother's birthday. Yes. As I always tell people. Uh, my mother is... Uh, up on the Rainbow Bridge, greeting yes. all the animals that come over the Rainbow Bridge. She always loved animals. She was, you know, a, a pet hoarder. And so she, seeing millions of cats come over the bridge at once would not face her Yay. in any way. There's always room for more. And <laughs> I, didn't, right. I didn't know until you told me that yesterday or the day before your birthday is your grandmother's birthday. That's right. My father's mother, Margaret. The one who God. turned down Laurence Olivier in yeah. acting school over yeah. in England. Yeah, Sorry, she, Larry. No. Larry, no. You're a cad. I have no time for you. Yes. He he begged her to elope. Uh-huh. And she said no. And I asked her in the 70s when I, when, you know, she was old and my grandmother, she she was born in 1902. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I asked her, did you ever regret not saying yes to Laurence Olivier's elopement request. And she said, no, no, he was a cad and he was, he divorced his first wife to marry Vivian Lee. Right. So she had no regrets in life. She wasn't going to spend any time on that. So no. No. <laughs> well, I think everything worked out best for everyone. Everyone worked out. It all worked out. And yes. my mother never knew on this earth that Donald Trump was president. So that's right. That's right. I was That's thinking right. about her today, of course. Um, she actually, and I don't think she'd mind me saying this, uh, she checked herself into the hospital during the uh, Clinton impeachment. Uh -huh. She was so upset. And uh, my dad was always like, like you do. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad looked out for my mom and her emotional state. And if he saw her emotional state going in the wrong direction, he would check on her, you know, make sure that things were going okay. You have never had to take me to the hospital, uh, no. but um, my dad did. And in that particular instance, uh, they had her check in. So, uh, and I think, like I said, I think she would be okay with me talking about that. Uh, it was uh, very emotional for her. Yeah, well, I, and, yeah. Yeah, you know, the unfairness of it and the the evil that was going on. And uh, so I think if she had known, she she died two weeks before Trump was elected. Yeah. So, um, oh, two days, excuse me. She two died, days. She died right, November 4th. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, thank goodness she didn't, she didn't know about that. Uh, but, yes, I, today's my birthday. And I want to thank everybody who's already said happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a lovely time. And prospectively thank all the people who are going to say happy birthday. <laughs> yes. After they listen to this podcast, That's which will right. make it, which That's will go right. around the world and be listened to by millions of people. <laughs> Thousands of people. Literally we dozens do of people. Yes. We really appreciate we really you do. being a part of our family. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's always good to talk to you mm -hmm. guys. And, um, so, well, yes, we're glad we're not in Tennessee just because Tennessee, like many red states, has lost its mind and has decided to uh, suspend all efforts to immunize teenagers. Event for anything. For anything. Yeah. For smallpox, yep. I guess. is I know that doesn't exist anymore, thanks to vaccines. Yeah, well. <laughs> but, uh, you know, m and measles, is, mumps, rubella. All that stuff. All that stuff. All the stuff that... If you live in a normal state, you have to show records of your child having those things mm -hmm. to get into school at all, public yeah. school at all. We're dealing with that with the youngest child right now because yep. she's a senior and mm -hmm. there are absolutely shots that as a senior, she has to have. Yep. And 10 days after school starts, 
she's not allowed in school. She hasn't had those shots. Mm-hmm. Well, ten, and the, so. the, the, in the odd coincidence department, I just noticed this when I was writing this up, is this week is the 96th anniversary of the Scopes Monkey Trial. Yeah. In Tennessee. In Tennessee. Where the, the good people of Tennessee decided that teaching science in science class was a terrible idea. And uh, because it would make Jesus sad and it was the, and, and although Inherit the Wind is a wonderful movie and I strongly urge everyone to see it and YouTube the clips because the clips from Spencer Tracy are electric and it's well cast. uh, John Scopes lost that trial. He did. It was not a win in the court. No. No. In the court of public opinion nationally, it was a win for science. And it was one of the first, uh, the first or one of the first, um, uh, hearings or or events like uh, set like that that was broadcast on radio. Uh huh. So I think WGN carried it coast to coast, and and Tennessee got a massive black eye for coming across as in this medieval you know shithole of a mm-hmm. state, which it is trying really hard to by electing Marsha Blackburn and outlawing um, uh, vaccines for children. They really are saying, look, the Enlightenment is not welcome in our state. Mm-hmm. We don't mm-hmm. want it here. Mm-hmm. We're very comfortable living in in medieval squalor and disease um, and electing Republicans because those two things go hand in hand. Meanwhile, in these civilized well, Meanwhile, world, in Alabama, there's a preacher. And, and you know, I have a, a love-hate thing about Right Wing Watch because mm-hmm. in before social media and the Internet, these crazy preachers would have been – preaching to 10 people and you'd never hear from them and they'd never have any impact on our society. True. Well, okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll hold my disagreement off till you're done. All right. Mm-hmm. But this, this preacher in Alabama who is now telling his parishioners, uh, by the way, with a blonde wearing a Trump 2021 t-shirt standing right behind him mm-hmm. on the platform, he is saying, if you pray, if you've had the vaccine and you pray and repent mm-hmm. for having had the vaccine, we can, you can remove it from your system. Right. It'll leave your body. It'll leave your body. You can exercise it from your, your system. Yeah. Usually the in the form of- The vaccine that protects you from dying from COVID, you yes. can remove it mentally it will, or supernaturally or whatever. It will externalize and manifest itself in the form of $20 bills that you should put in his <laughs> That go plate. into the coffer right. of sure. the of my church. Yeah. Well, and the idea that these you know crackpot preachers would not have been heard of prior to social media is true in general. Mm-hmm. However, as I, I remind people and routinely get myself slapped on the wrist for doing so, it was Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson who ran massive Massive ministries. And Jerry Falwell's kid has a university that his daddy gave him mm-hmm. before he died. Um, uh, back in 2001, blaming 9-11 on yep. lesbians and the ACLU mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. abortionists and the mm-hmm. liberals. Um, and Well, and you had Father Coughlin in the 30s. I yeah. mean, it, you, there have been crazy preachers who had access to mass media before this. And Absolutely. Just as a reminder to the four conservatives who listen to this podcast. Um the Republican Party didn't drive uh, Jerry Falwell or Pat Robertson out of the party. In fact, John McCain did um, t- uh, take on Jerry Falwell in uh, when he was running in primaries, when he was running against George Bush, basically, and he got crushed. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he knew, he learned, John McCain, hero, uh, maverick John McCain, learned exactly who his base was. Yep. And so when he was running in 2008 – he knew damn well that he had to go down to Liberty University and kiss Jerry Falwell's ass if he had mm-hmm. any chance of winning because mm-hmm. that's who the GOP base was, mm-hmm. all of which was thoroughly documented from the lesbian comments and the, the Jerry Falwell comments to the, the right-wing dominionists have taken over the GOP, all of which has been extensively documented in the liberal blogosphere for the last 20 yeah. years. And not just Falwell, John Hagee. Oh, yeah. Nut job John Hagee yeah. had to had to be on the stage with John McCain. Yeah. You had to, yeah, you couldn't not suck up to the religious right. Had yeah. to do it. And that was, this has been a staple. This is why I get extremely impatient with people who act shocked that the right wing dominionist folks are somehow, you know, running a big chunk of the GOP. They've always been running the GOP. Yeah. Uh, uh, the person who vi- invited Jerry Falwell to the table was Ronald Reagan. Yep. 
So let's not get all weepy about the good old days of civility and the good old days of when we <laughs> yes. all sort of got along, but we fought, but we got along nicely. I urge you to go take a look at the things that Republicans were saying about us on the left back in the good old days when Newt Gingrich was calling, was 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 explaining that Susan Smith murdered her child because that's just what liberals do. Right. And, and we was, need to we need to elect more conservatives to prevent child murder. Right. That's what and, Newt Gingrich was saying. And Newt Gingrich was punished for saying that and worse over and over and over again and teaching others by being elected to the speakership of the House of Representatives <laughs> for the Republican Party. Exactly. So, and that was 30 fucking years ago. That was, Well, I'm sorry. That was a quarter of a century ago. Yeah. So please do not, do not, if anyone, anyone tries to tell you that this is just a brand new thing. This all happened yesterday. We, we ne- never saw it coming. You didn't see it coming because it was making you money mm-hmm. or you're a moron or you're a liar. But there's no fourth alternative because there's a whole stack of evidence that says, no, no, no. Liberals saw this coming miles away and tried to warn you long ago. And you told us to shut up and sit down. That's the past. The present is, speaking of correspondence, yes. we got a letter from Joseph Robinette Biden, didn't we? We did. We got a letter from Joe Biden, as did many families, mm-hmm. about the child, of- child care tax credit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as I, as I said on the podcast a few weeks ago, this is very much like um, the drinking age in Drift Glass. Yeah. Um, our child care credit will last for about uh, six months. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And, that's, but and then the youngest child turns 18 and we're done. <laughs> so. and then, but that's six months we, we otherwise would not have had. Right. And it is going out to tens of millions of families. Yes, it is. It's and really going to make, make a difference for a lot of people. And I'm... I, very, very grateful for that. Well, yeah. and and you you have, I mean, we opened the letter sort of breathlessly, and there it was. And you because know what? Because it said IRS on it. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get your attention. It got our attention. Um, but it's from Joseph Biden <laughs> yep. announcing doing what you should always do when you pass a, a groundbreaking social program, writing people at their home and telling them about it and how to take advantage of it. Well, and, and the how to take advantage of it is do nothing. That right. is the wonderful part of this bill. Mm-hmm. If you filed your taxes last year or the year before, Mm -hmm. or if you filed the paperwork to get the stimulus this year, Mm -hmm. which a lot of people who don't ordinarily file paper tax returns uh, did file to get the money, you know, to get stimulus payments. Mm -hmm. Um, You're already in the database and you're already going to get that money. So Mm -hmm. I I find it amusing to watch Fox News when you talk about Kaylee McEnany and and she's mad because people who don't have income mm-hmm. are getting this money. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of the point, Kaylee. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have any income, so why should they get a tax credit? Uh, because Ronald Reagan said they should. That's right. why. That's right. Uh, no, no fair remembering <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, right. I, I right. will say, um, to his credit, Jonathan V. Last of the Bulwark mm-hmm. has a lovely column uh, today or yesterday, taking um, Ross Newfat apart one chunk at a time. Hmm. Uh, in the middle of there somewhere, it's, it's why is it people who have a demonstrable record of being horribly wrong never get called on it? Hmm. And I just, I would like a nickel for every time I have asked that question <laughs> and you've asked it. Yes. Because if liberals collectively had a nickel for every time we asked, why the hell does this person still have a job, rightly so, mm-hmm. we would have enough money to start a liberal media corporation with, you know, from scratch. We could do it from scratch. But to his credit, Mr. Last, when taking Ross to that apart over his, um, his, his protestations that populism has never been tried and inventing some platonic ideal of what uh, anti-Trumpism should be, just basically being the bullshit guy that he is, points out that the child tax credit is a massive popular populist program that will help exactly the people that Ross do that is always chiding and, 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 uh, accusing liberals of forgetting and that Mm -hmm, since mm -hmm. it passed he has written about and and mr last puts down like a whole bunch of shit biden is failing biden is failing his promises never once written about this one program Mm -hmm, never once mm -hmm, and i mm -hmm. i've heard it said you know liberals should talk more about this shit believe me if we had columns in the new york times like ross do that does we would but there is no liberal media so there's no megaphone big enough for (laughs) us to use but the point being that Ross would much rather talk about a bunch of nonsense and cherry pick bullshit than talk about the things that are actually happening um, in the real world, which does but remind me. Class, sp- yep. Here's the amazing thing. Yep. Because this program, like Social Security, like Medicare, 
is so universal. Uh huh. Everybody, every married couple under making under 150 grand who has children in the house is getting this. Right. And so, and it is aimed at children. Yes. So the megaphone is parents writing about it. Oh, yeah. And talking with their friends about it and going to the zoo with their kids because all of a sudden they can breathe. Mm -hmm. They have enough to take for one day, for one goddamn day, they can take their children. This is in the New York Times, by the way, and, you know, Mm -hmm. interviewing a mom on the street who has enough money. All of a sudden, she can take her child to the zoo. Oh, my. uh, Which is, by the way, putting money back into the economy. Yes. In in ways that building (laughs) a spaceship does not. No, exactly. Exactly. So uh, the word of mouth on this and the and the conversations that people will be having um, about having this money. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing lots of mentions of it on social media. Of, oh, yeah. This is going to change yeah. my life. So, uh, but, and well, it's it, changing the lives of parents with children. And that, that's really critical. It, it just strongly reminded me of back during the Affordable Care Act days when um, uh, David Brooks would write scathing columns about all the shit that Barack Obama should be doing that he was actually doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you need to invent a reason to be mad at him and to think he's not doing his job. Because if you pointed out that he's doing his job and he's trying really hard to succeed and, and there's one party that's killing everything, then you don't get both sides do it. Which right. Is, you know, then David Brooks has to go look for honest work. So he would just invent shit to get mad about. And um, I forget which writer it was in The Atlantic or The New Yorker saying, uh, actually, here's all the shit that he's doing. All the things you say he should be doing and, and curse him for not doing so, he's actually doing which, you know, facts are inconvenient when you're having opinions, uh, when you're farting opinions for a living. So it was just, a, it's, you know, same New York Times conservative columnist gene pool just keeps producing these people over and over again. Jeff Class, I want to talk about somebody else that got a windfall. Who got a windfall? Megan Kelly. She got she, $26 she, million dollars to go away and she won't go away. Oh, no, no, no. She got $69 million. $69 million to go away and she won't dollars. go away. Now imagine what you could do with $69 million a payday to go away, to not do your job anymore. Imagine you fucked up so badly that that NBC wants to write you off. $69 million. That's the total. That was her her entire contract. And she got the balance of her contract for not showing up to work anymore and going away. I've moved to Niagara Falls and you'd never hear from me again. I sort of... (laughs) Well, you and I talked about opening a, a, a writer's colony and a yeah. little liberal uh, using one of the upstate uh, New York. Yeah. I just, you know, well, someplace. I don't know the Poconos. Well, a, yeah, the, the little the little um, Route sixty six motels that are cute and quaint and need a lot of rehabilitation. I thought those would be great little bungalows for having a little writers a little mm-hmm. liberal writers colony mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. have our own little liberal media and we could preside over it like gods. That'd be great. <laughs> No, No. your writing is bad. I'm sorry. Nothing but critical race theory here. Get out. (laughs) Out. Which is, I'm jumping ahead to Andrew Sullivan. So let me jump Uh, back to Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly. Which is her her comments this week. What did she say this week? Well, this week it was, there's no question the media represented the Capitol riots uh, as so much worse than it actually was. And a whole bunch of people who were actually there covering it for mm-hmm. news for news organizations, not yes. for their right wing YouTube page, <laughs> yes. but actual reporters saying, "Oh no, it was as bad as it looks, and a little worse than yeah. it looks." So, and and the more footage that comes out, and the more the timeline yeah, is the is looked at, the poor cop who had heart attacks. Yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable it how was, bad it is. And it was, but, but, but for, she didn't say that to add to a conversation. No, no. She said it to get attention. Look mm-hmm. at me, look at me. And but for the quick thinking of a couple of um, Capitol Hill cops who misdirected a mob, yeah. this would have ended very differently. You know, mm-hmm. there would have been murder, there would have been blood on the stairs, and the democracy, our democracy, could very well have ended on January 6th. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um because Donald Trump wanted it to be over on January 6th. He would have been thrilled if, you know, Mike Pence had been hung, if if uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi had been dragged out and, you know, show trialed in front of a mob. Um, that's every wingnut's wet dream. Um, but it wasn't so bad because, see, Megyn Kelly has, you got to understand, Megyn Kelly is, is a media property. And... Therefore, as a media property, she's she is to be bought and sold, and she's willing to buy and sell herself to the highest bidder. 
based on the equally cynical interests of the media corporations who are willing to buy that property. Once she, upon a time, she was on Fox News. And she was the blonde on Fox News and very popular. And I watched in real time in Springfield local big fans, big wingnut fans of uh, Megyn Kelly turn on her almost overnight. Mm -hmm. Suddenly she was worse than that lesbian on MSNBC. Because she stood up to Trump. Because she she actually pushed back ever so slightly against Donald Trump. And Mm -hmm. once Fox News feared for losing its number one customer, who was Donald Trump, Mm -hmm. out she went. She was gone. And then she was hired by NBC, which literally everyone except the president of NBC knew was a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're like, oh, you're kidding me. Don't you know who she is and what her brand is and why are you putting her here? Well, and and let's let's not forget the blatant blank-eyed racism of Megyn Kelly. Oh, no, that's that's the thing. Which everybody knew well before she opened her mouth about Absolutely. blackface Halloween costumes mm-hmm. on the Today program. Yep. But this is this is this was part of NBC and MSNBC's relentless drive to be more conservative. Yes. This is during the hiring spree when they had Hugh Hewitt on there and Steve Schmidt and they hired Nicole Wallace. And Michael Steele suddenly popped up his crazy head. He did a head. whole advertising yeah. campaign. People might start accusing us of leaning too far to the right. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. And there was a whole thing about NBC hiring as a signal to appease the right because, again, literally everyone on earth knew this was going to be a terrible idea except for the president of the company who thought, if we could just get more wing nuts to watch our programs and buy dick pics here or, or, or dick pills. I'm sorry, dick pills here. Um, and then she walked away. Uh, like a year later, <laughs> walked away with the remainder of her $69 million deal in her pocket. Um, and then there's a, there was a lovely write-up in the New Yorker about entitled NBC's firing of Megyn Kelly is as cynical as her hiring was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was, oh, Andy Lack had a whole bunch of shit going on at, the, at, at one time. He had Matt Lauer disaster. He had, you know, failing to follow through with Ronan Farrow. He had a whole bunch of of things that made him look like the incompetent hack that he actually is. And so when Megyn Kelly uh, said something about um, uh, blackface. Right. Um, suddenly Halloween, he's, Halloween costumes and black. You, yeah. Why can't I, why can't my child go as a black person for Halloween? Right. That allowed him to go, oh my God, <laughs> how did this ever happen to this corporation? We need to get rid of her immediately. And by getting rid of her, it was, we're going to buy out the rest of your contract. Um. Again, upstate New York, and you would never hear from me again. But yeah. that's not Megan Kelly's. No, no. And the right? minute the minute she's out the door, she turns around and starts shitting on Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is, mm-hmm. hey, I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm saying, <laughs> if I may quote uh, um, the last episode of Loki, uh, not to spoil anything, uh, we're all villains here. <laughs> we're all villains Everyone here. Everyone in that room is a villain. So don't, I'm not looking for any heroes, but... She walks out the door and starts shitting on her former colleagues because that's what you do. And then she takes her hard-earned money, and let's face it, it's not that hard-earned, and launches into a podcasting venture. Isn't that exciting? Uh, That was less than a year ago. Um, And then she shits some more on her colleagues and talks about how working at NBC was not intellectually stimulating. (laughs) You know? I had a ball. I was doing great at Fox News, and I overcompensated by working with the dum-dums at NBC. And... You know, you can just hear her begging for her job back on Fox. Right, because this deal with Sirius XM yeah. isn't getting her enough of a spotlight. No, no, so she's doing what you do to get back into the headlines, back mm-hmm. on television mm-hmm. with that in that universe, which is say outrageous shit, get people to say what outrageous shit you did, get clicks and likes and controversy, and then because the entire Fox News audience are reprogrammable meatheads, Um, She can just reappear magically and all will be forgiven and forgotten like every other Republican who shit the bed and who they needed to call back. So, hey, we're just going to forget that the Iraq war ever happened and we're not going to call foul on anybody who got us there. And that's Megyn Kelly's career arc so far, uh, which is remarkable. I mean, every step along the way, people are just throwing bales of money at her and people are just saying, do you can't you see past her tits and legs? And the answer is no. Because that's yeah. what she's here for. She's here. Uh, she she was perfectly happy to work at at uh, Roger Ailes' sexual predator petting zoo Meat for house. years. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, because money and fame, et cetera, et cetera. But then she she complained about how she got dragged. She wanted to do real journalism, but got dragged into the controversy because that's what happens over at Fox. I said, no, you worked at a house of ill repute <laughs> and you worked there very happily for a long time mm-hmm. until you crossed mm-hmm. their number one customer and then you had to go. But that's the media. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what happens at, at it because she is a piece of equipment. And at, cause, and that's how you know that Andy Lack and NBC and MSNBC don't give a shit about what you think. Don't have any yeah. interest in being a liberal media. Don't have any interest in being an informant, informing the public. It's what products will ga- gather the maximum number of people under our tent to buy the shit our advertisers sell. That's yeah. their entire concern. That's the, it Well, in Drift Class, I feel a sense of responsibility, actually, for something. This gets a little off topic, and it's not in our notes. I apologize. Oh, but- no. Um, How will Shep, I adjust? Shep Smith's show on CNBC. Yeah. Which is a good news show. Pretty good news show. Yeah. Uh, a lot of international news, things that you wouldn't see other places, but it's not viral. It's not uh, conservatives and liberals doing shouty crackers at each other. No. It's covering world news and covering it. Yeah. And it's do it's in the toilet. Yeah. Um. Shep Smith's upset about it. He's having, apparently, according to one outlet, having tantrums. But, you know, that means that it, the ratings aren't good. No. And I, as an editor at Crooks and Liars, can't do anything about that because I'm not going to tweet about a competent show that covers world news and doesn't no. have any fireworks. Right. That's not my job as somebody who needs to get clicks. And I mean, I'm participating in this ecosphere, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I don't know how, uh, you know, if, if you're trying to make money in this environment or if you're trying to um, support yourself. And I mean, at, at Crooks and Liars, what we're trying to do is pay our video server bill. You yeah, know, that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, no one's making a huge profit over there. No. Uh, but I, I I don't know how to fix it. You know, there's no there's no environment where people are going to sit down and watch common sense world news. Well, there is. It's the 1963s. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> well, that's because that's all there was, right? right exactly. I mean, and, and let's face it, there's a lot going on that didn't talk about on the news that was, right. you know, racism and right. Vietnam right. and all all the other stuff. A lot of a lot of good has come from this explosion of a conversation. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think. But. but there so are what, there are huge downsides to it, I, and I would say, respectfully, um, you know, uh, Crooks and Liars is my favorite video site. You know, I go there every day. Mm-hmm. I watch, I watch you, I watch you just strap into the hazmat suit and go, you know, wading <laughs> chin deep in bullshit every <laughs> fucking day. Like, Jesus and you walk Christ. by and hand me coffee and say, "So, what are, are you, you writing okay? about right now?" And I say, "I don't want to talk about uh, it. Go away. <laughs> I just want to get this post done because." <laughs> I'm writing about Tucker Carlson. Go away. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing I'm, me. I'm doing a think piece on Andrew Sullivan in the, no. in the other room. <laughs> Go away. You did a very funny Photoshop well, of thanks. Andrew Sullivan. I, I anyway. do. I do try. And, and this is driftglass.blogspot.com. We, we are. We. I gotta say, we are well matched as a. We are uh, in, in lots and lots and lots of ways. <laughs> um, but but here's the thing: there really is a solution to this problem, but it's not a solution that's ever going to happen in my lifetime, which is. Th- there is a bad group of bad actors mm-hmm. on the right who've been mm-hmm. bad actors for decades mm-hmm. who are very close to ending this country's democratic experiment. Yeah. yeah. And then there is a, a group of people called journalists whose job it was for all those decades to call them out, to tell the truth, to point things out, to say Walter Cronkite them and point to them and say, we can't win this war. These people are terrible and mm-hmm. who refused mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's mm-hmm. this, timid, half-assed, sort of kind of every other day, every other hour, um, liberal media um, that's corporate. That's, you know, the, the, a corp is a, is a corporate product called MSNBC or NBC, et cetera. And they are, sh- they shout at each other. And the problem is there is no competent authority capable of taking the Fox News universe apart piece by piece and destroying it. And so we're stuck reacting to a, 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 a vibrant fascist movement in our midst that involves our neighbors, people we work with, people, people who run companies in the towns where we live, all across the country. And there is no room in that environment 
for someone who just wants to talk about stock prices and pork futures and the weather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's sad. That's incredibly sad because those things are necessary. I do watch those things. I think those things are important. Those things fill out my day, you know, knowing what's going on in my town. It's really important to us. But right now, there's a massive threat on the right that no one is adequately addressing. And we are reduced to doing what they do on Crossfire that um, John Stewart, you know, blew up, which is people screaming at each other for, for in a way that doesn't advance anything. Now I happen to think we are on the side of the angels and I can prove it with ample evidence, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't Mm -hmm. make it any less exhausting that we can't have calm, tempered, basic news in the middle of this hurricane Mm -hmm. pisses Mm -hmm. me right off um speaking of both sides yeah um your boy your boy is back my boy is back yeah teapaw teapaw is back tim valenti decided to be on cnn and i this is where i've really got to hand it to brianna keeler um because she was interviewing teapaw who's, you know, the failed 2012 presidential can- candidate, yep. also retired big bank lobbyist. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's the summer lull and there's nothing else to talk about. So let's talk to Tim Pawlenty about politics. And uh, he decided to go both sides. You yeah. know, there, there are, uh, he was asked about C- CPAC, which right. was last weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, his his answer was that there are goofballs on both sides. Oh, God, yeah. Goofballs and everywhere, you know. Brianna Keller said, can you name any? And there was this pause of... Um, I'm sorry, what? What? Is it, what? <laughs> What'd you say? Can you name any goofballs, as you call them, on the left mm-hmm. who are speaking or are invited to a conference... Where the former president, a former Democratic president of the United States, is speaking. And here's Donald Trump speaking at CPAC. Mm-hmm. And you have Proud Boys and three percenters walking around the hallways of the hotel where Donald Trump is speaking. Mm-hmm. Well, Antifa is the same right, as Antifa. anybody at CPAC. Oh, God, yeah. Just exactly the same. I, you and, know what? And, and, and Brianna? To mm-hmm. her credit, she really did her job. I couldn't fault her for any of this. She said, you know, this, again, Antifa was not invited to any liberal convention <laughs> or Democratic event ever and would not be seen walking the hallways while a president of the United States, former president of the United States on the Democratic side was speaking. That just would not happen. And he said, oh, well, come on, you know, there's no difference between a, a hotel ballroom and a street corner. He literally said that. Sure. There's no difference. Well, Teapot has had prostitutes in both locations. So, you know, I. <laughs> you know, we, they, they had Oath Keepers and Proud Boys and Three yeah. Percenters at CPAC. Well, they had Republicans, too, who were and one it was, tick away from, yeah, being yeah, just right. as bad. <laughs> And I'm sure that the the merch table was full of all kinds of things oh, that, you, yeah. that no no person in their right mind would ever put on their body. Absolutely. But, uh, but we remember uh, how bad Democrats can get. Remember the Stop the Steal riots after the Ned Lamont campaign? Oh, remember you that? know, we did. All those riots we had for Ned Lamont. That's oh, and right. The, <laughs> I remember when they, we burned down Cincinnati because of the Al Gore decision in 2000. Remember Killed that? Killed cops. Yeah, oh, yeah, we did all that. It was so that. bad. Sure. It was sure. so bad. Sure. Um, actually, and you were talking about this and I was so, you know what this reminds me of? Cause I have a really goofy memory. Mm-hmm. Um, I was driving to work back when I drove to work. This was in 2007 mm-hmm. and I was listening to NPR, nice, polite Republicans, listening to Neil Conan interview George Mitchell and Alan Simpson. And I swear to God, I, I did a fast transcript. I, I didn't have access to anything there. Um, but they were going back and forth about the fact that the house is nuts. We don't want mm-hmm. that, you know, coming over here. But but the real problem, they were all f- spun up about partisanship without any acknowledgement that when it comes to partisanship, the, the depths to which the Republican Party will sink to to destroy their opponents mm-hmm. is, is – there's nothing comparable on the Democratic side. There just mm-hmm. isn't. And this is 2007. Mm-hmm. This is before Trump. This is before uh, Obama. Mm-hmm. Um, and they went back and forth. They said things I could agree with. It, then came caller Isabel from New Jersey. 
And caller Isabel said, I think the problem right now is not so much between the Republicans and Democrats as is between those with an ideological approach to politics and those with a pragmatic ap- approach. <laughs> and and to no one's to no one's surprise, completely unprompted, shortly thereafter, um, they were able to name all kinds of people. They were able to name um, Sam Brownback, and they were able to say George Bush. They were able to say Christy Todd Whitman, all on the Republican side. And then caller Isabel said, it's more difficult to com- compromise because their ideology is based on ideology, not, not on reality. And that's when Neil Conan, again, completely unprompted, jumped in and said, I would suspect, to be fair, that there are at least a few Democrats who have an ideology of their own, too. And the caller said, yes, I agree. I just couldn't think of one, though. <laughs> and that's how deeply burned on the motherboard yep. Yep. of – NPR listeners, mm-hmm. of nice, polite Republicans, of establishment people, of, of let's just say New York Times conservative columnists, all the way back during the during 2007, way before that, even a decade mm-hmm. before that, that it must be the fault of both sides. It must be, or they'll take our funding away from us. So, it, and jump ahead to 2021, and you mm-hmm. have exactly the same bullshit. Exactly yeah. the same bullshit. Yeah. And there is this unkillable thing. That that just persists no matter what you do, no matter how much evidence you bring against it, that it has to be both sides. Because if it if it isn't, then I'm going to be forced to make a moral choice. Right. But drift glass, this is this is the point. For for years, people have been able to point to Bernie Sanders right. as being the wacky on the on the left who's, you know, ideologically so far left that he's crazy and oh, he's, he's not going to get anything done. When you make him chairman of the Senate Budget Committee, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and this is a situation of both sides where Republicans and many of our comrades cannot adjust to this because right. Bernie Sanders is making compromises. Yes. And that's just an anathema to many on our, of our comrades. Mm-hmm. You know, don't compromise with anyone or on anything and don't don't cut my pet billion dollars. Mm-hmm. And and Bernie is doing that. Bernie is is negotiating and coming up with a plan that will pass. And it means that you're getting checks for children. Right. It means that we're going to have hearing aids and glasses for Medicare recipients. That's now, right. Maybe this go round, mm-hmm. we won't get a reduction in the Medicare age. Maybe. Uh, maybe. But. That's the direction they're headed. Uh, that's the direction they're headed, and that can be an election issue in 2022. It sure as hell can. Uh, you know, the turnout, every, everything I'm looking at, if we don't get it now, it's a 2022 issue. And that's the way you need to see this. If you mm-hmm. If you didn't get it and you're disappointed, instead of turning on Democrats, turn it around and say, look, we're, we're running on this. It, five more Democrats. Democrats in the Senate, we can get there. We can. We need um, to mansion proof the Senate. We need to mansion proof the Senate. Mm-hmm. And then we can do a, another go round of Democrats only bills that get through and spend money on things that we need to spend money on. Uh, and also, I, I don't want to forget to applaud Cleveland's plane dealer Let's because do that. they decided to have an explicit strategy of not covering nut jobs. And if you lie all the time, like one, I'm not even going to say his name. One of their Senate candidates Mm -hmm. is insane. Yeah. And he is now begging for attention from, for his tweets from the Cleveland plane dealer. Mm -hmm. And they have a policy of, if you are just shouting lies, including stop the steal, if you're going to make false statements as a stunt, to get attention, we're not paying attention to you. And we're not going to put your name mm-hmm. on our website or in the paper. If you want to talk about something serious, we'll talk about it. But if you're not, we're done. And it's working. These it's they're and you know, they're actually helping Republicans because I know they're forcing them to they're forcing them to have you know, reality based candidates. Yeah. Um comb the shit out of their hair and put shoes right. on. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, applause to them. There's an article about it in uh, Neiman Labs, if you want to go and read about, it. again, their explicit strategy for not covering overt lies. So um, applause to them for that. Uh, 
So I want you to talk about Scott Reeder, who is a local Springfield columnist. He's a, he's a local Springfield treasure, Blue Cow. <laughs> he's a local. The reason it is so hard to pry the both sides do it lie out of um, American public life when it's so clear that it's bullshit mm-hmm. is that as I, I title my post on this, it's Brooks is all the way down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that those people are, are have just saturated local media. They're every fucking where. The SJR, our local newspaper, is down to like they've That's sold the their State building. State Journal Register. State Journal is the oldest newspaper in in Illinois. It's a Republican rag. It runs about four pages long. Half of those are obituaries and sports. Um, and but and they're hanging on to their octogenarian conservative subscribership. That's mm-hmm. who pays the bills. Mm-hmm. So they have to f- keep feeding them stuff that'll keep them there. Now they used to uh, syndicate people like Ann Coulter. They mm-hmm. might still do it. I, I don't know. I don't pay attention that much to her and her ilk anymore. But you still see just crazy right-wing nut jobs in there. But they can't be that all the time. So this, the SJR has has two kinds of editorial policies for outsiders. One is the letter writers, ordinary citizens like you and me. And I will tell you right now, there is a cadre of wing nuts out there who, who know the rules by heart. Oh, 200, yeah. 250 words or less and 30 days. So they mail a letter in. Every 30 the, days. Every, every 30 days, yep. bang. And it might get published, it might not, but they know what the policy is. Yeah. There's a separate policy for what they call guest columnists, which has a minimum. It has to be at least 350 words, up to five or 600, and it should be relevant and blah, 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 blah. Guest columnists also must include a headshot and a tagline because they're, they're, they're more respectable. And there's no limit to the number of guest columns a guest columnist can have. So Scott Reeder appears a lot in the SJR. He doesn't work for them. He's a guest columnist and his byline, his bio says he's a veteran state house journalist and has worked as a freelance reporter in the Springfield area or works that way, which is great. Um, just some guy, right? Some guy got opinions, no political ideological bent. He just has a lot of things to say, reported for the state house for a while. And now he wants to come to the SJR and bring the reader's attention to the single greatest problem plaguing American politics today. The extremes on both sides. <laughs> and Guess which party he's a part of. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I guarantee you that if you squint your eyes, you would not be able to distinguish Mr. Scott Reader's column from David Brooks's every mm, fucking absolutely. David Brooks column for the last 20 he, years. He's a clone. He wants uh, to be a clone. Absolutely is. Yeah. Um, and if you broke out an electron microscope and read his words to the quantum level, you will not find any mention or hint that Donald Trump was ever president. <laughs> <laughs> or that just six months ago, Republicans tried to violently overthrow the U.S. government. Well, every every output from our congressman, Rodney Davis, is exactly the same. Of course. Of course. I'm winning awards for my bipartisanship. I'm so bipartisan. It'll make you sick. <laughs> you don't want those crazy liberals in here. They're not bipartisan at all. They hate America. Um, That's our congressman. You will find no mention of Newt Gingrich or Jerry Falwell or Fox News or Ann Coulter or, or Candace Owens. Nope. Um, who the who was just brought into town to whip up the crazies and and she did, was brought in by the county Republican Party, yeah, paid by them, paid by them to come um, and speak at their annual conference. Yes, but none of that history exists in Mister Reader's telling. Nope. Instead, he goes full David Brooks, yeah. and the title of his his column is "Complaining Needs to End, Listening Needs to Begin." We need to listen more, people. Yeah, and the. <laughs> And it's this, it's social media and the Senate doesn't equally represent the American people, but it's sh- it shouldn't because the founding fathers never intended for the Senate to represent the American people. Instead of griping about it, we should ask ourselves questions like, why don't we have diversity of thought in both parties? Why do, why do we have ideological litmus tests in both parties? I don't know. We've got, we've got Bernie Sanders yeah. and Joe Manchin I know. caucusing with well, us. I, this is where it's, and of course- one of the things that's disappeared from the column is the eight-year lab experiment in exactly the sort of open-handed, compromise-prone, centrist Democratic you politics. Mean the Barack Obama the administration. Barack Obama <laughs> that Mr. Reader pretends is the be-all and end-all politics. Does not exist. Does yeah. not exist at all. There's just yeah. – everything started a few years ago. No one knows why. And now we have a deadlock Senate because some leaders in both parties have stopped trying to serve significant portions of the American people, period. And you just sit there and go – Joe Biden is trying to pass a whole bunch of shit to help a whole bunch of people, a lot of whom aren't going to vote for him. Barack Obama passed the ACA and other things to help Americans. 
Republicans have tried to burn all that shit down and call liberals communists for even trying. Mm-hmm. So Scott Reeder is a fucking liar. So why is this liar? Where does this and liar you and come I, from? You and I talked about this column. Yeah. And I said, I will bet you he's with the Illinois Policy Institute. Oh, my goodness. He's with the Illinois Policy Institute. <laughs> Yep. The well-funded right-wing think oh, tank the, in Springfield that has its 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 tentacles everywhere. There's there's oh, the yeah. Uline Family Foundation and Donors Trust, and Illinois Policy Institute, and remember, local media is being is being strangled. Yep, being killed off. Newspapers, like I said, the SJR is down to they sold their building, they laid off their most professional staff, they laid off their best editors, they laid off their photographers. Their photographers there's like, yep, there's like five people in a room making up stories. They are starving for content. And what does well, the they're Illinois- just reprinting AP stories? Right. That's, oh, it's that's rip and it. read AP. But yeah. what does what does the Illinois Policy Institute, the extraordinarily well funded, they have a propaganda arm mm-hmm. that feeds stories to these starving local news networks that mm-hmm. all have a Republican or Libertarian or you know reasonable centrist bent, and that is where Mr. Scott Reeder comes from. Mm-hmm. He is the guy they hire to build the Illinois News Network and buy a radio station to create a feeder system to pump shit like this into local newspapers. So he's not just a guest columnist. Which then pumps it onto Facebook, which then pumps it into everybody. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yep. that is why I thought I would devote an entire column to it because it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. And it's everywhere. money. It's money. And it's money to bend public thought to the libertarian side of we can't have exactly. any tax increases for anybody ever. This is not money. We can't money. fund the Wall Street Journal. We can't. We can't fund the IRS because that's evil. And this is yeah. not money generated by the excellence of the articles in the paper. No, like I got to go buy this this magazine because look what's no no. This is money funding the creation of bullshit to shove yeah. into magazines and papers like yeah, this. Yeah, correct. Because they need to get the word out to everyone that it really is both sides. Because that's the last refuge of the worst people in the world. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the last. And, and shittiest refuge of the worst conservatives and the worst people in the media is always going to be both sides do it. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. that's the big lie. That really is. And I, I was call, I've been calling it that since 2005. The biggest lie, the worst, most toxic is lie in the media both sides is both sides do, do it. Do it. And, yep. and kudos to you kids out there for making both sides do it. Carrying don't that message. Yes. It so, really works. It's it, really working. It doesn't. It hasn't it worked, worked yet it, in Springfield. It, 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 it seeped all the way up to CNN. Yeah. And Brianna Keller just said, name one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to t <T-Paw. laughs> Both sides don't, has made it to CNN. Well, and that's marvelous. I would like you to talk about Texas. Yes, because as you know, I uh, occasionally donate five bucks to teachers, public school teachers mm-hmm. at via Donors Choose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go and look particularly for classrooms. Uh, again, these are all public schools. Um, classrooms that have high poverty rates, have uh, special needs teachers. I'm very interested in classrooms that are helping students with autism uh, do better because that affected me personally. And this is my way. Tossing five bucks to a school teacher is my way of paying it forward for all of the public school teachers who helped my son, Mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, said nothing but I want Cheerios (laughs) when he was three. No, and I want Cheerios. And this year he graduated from college and he's mm-hmm. a passionate about politics and he's uh, a very well-spoken, uh, mm-hmm. delightful person. And that in large part is because of the therapists and special needs teachers and classroom teachers and principals who cared mm-hmm. and uh, had also had a very involved parent <laughs> Yeah, yeah <laughs> to, to and, and a um, dad with resources to to hire outside help as well. But I'm really grateful for the special needs teachers and the public schools that helped my son get to where he is today. So I pay pay it forward by teachers that need something for their classroom. I pitch mm-hmm. in five bucks, and it is it's it's crowdfunding, right? It if, if everybody gives five bucks, the teacher will have the sensory objects or the you know, science sometimes they books. want Kindles or science fiction books or whatever yeah. it is they need. And uh, so this week, I and of course, I'm on their email list. So I get this email saying Donors Choose is looking for donors uh, for this one classroom. And I go and look at it. And it is a public school teacher in Texas. 
Um, and I believe the reason they sent to me was I had donated to her before for autism supplies in her classroom. Mm -hmm. But this time she was asking for number two pencils and filler paper for her students. Um, they have extended the school year in her district. They are going back to school August 2nd and her students don't have enough money mm -hmm. to buy paper and pencils. And she didn't know what she was going to do. So she went to Donors Choose and asked for basic supplies. Right. And basic supplies is a category at Donors Choose. So I went and looked up Donors Choose Texas basic supplies and found out there's 172 teachers in Texas alone looking for basic supplies for their classroom. Mm -hmm. And that is one side of Texas. Mm -hmm. The other side of Texas is Governor Greg Abbott and the Republican Party of Texas trying to ram through racist voter suppression bill mm -hmm. that will make it much harder for the parents of those students who need filler paper and pencils to start school mm -hmm. to vote. And uh, don't get me started about neglect of the power grid. <laughs> and don't get me started about, you know, the governor of the state trying to raise private money to build a fake wall yeah. to keep immigrants out. Mm -hmm. There's more COVID in Texas today than there is in Mexico. I would venture to say there are more assholes in Texas today than <laughs> are in Mexico, too. But well, we know of at least a couple. We, well, they keep getting elected. So somebody's <laughs> voting for them. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it is, you know, as, and Texas also has Beto O'Rourke. Yeah. And it had Ann Richards. Yeah. Uh, so there's something there. Well, worth, and they have Tex Betsy. I want yeah, to say shout out Tex to Betsy. Tex Betsy, mm -hmm. our, our uh, fellow blogger for years. And she's a teacher. Well, and just to be clear, when we uh, wholesale uh, denounce entire states of our union, Right. We also want to make clear that we understand that a big part of our listenership are blue dots in those states. Oh, yeah. And that their our lives, angel nerd. Our their, angel nerd is our in angel Texas. Our angel nerd is in Texas. Their and lives she's are, an activist. She really is. And <laughs> so, their lives yeah. are so much more difficult. And yep. their struggles are so much harder than living in a blue state with a progressive governor with fuck right. you money than we will ever know. Yep. And because they work so hard, um, it's maddening to see how much – opposition they have to overcome just to secure basic rights and basic this equipment for democracy. 2021 and they're trying to stop black people from voting. I know. I know. And 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 we have a democratic governor in Illinois with fuck yeah. you money who sat in the oval office today with Joe Biden. That's right. And you know, they didn't talk about why are you building a wall? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why is your power grid failing? No. 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 You know, and he this is the thing. And you know what? Joe Biden didn't lead over to Pritzker and say, I need 11,922 votes. No, he didn't have to do Go that. Go get him for me, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You know, it, it just, it's such a different fucking universe. So our yeah. our blue dots in red states are heroes. Mm -hmm. Their activism, mm -hmm. their their determination not to see their state stay this way forever is an inspiration to us. But the fact of the matter is the states they live in, are a mess. And they're a mess because the people in those states who want to wreck this country and field strip it for parts outnumber the good people in those states. Right. And it right. might be by, you know, a few thousand and it might swing either way because again, or Texas those had, votes just might be suppressed enough. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the whole they, point of suppressing a few thousand here and there is that Republicans can win by a razor thin cheated margin. And, and then cheat some more. And that's it. And then they yeah. they they take the house and suddenly we're having show trials and Hillary Clinton's being dragged back to wherever she's at. Right. And that's the end of the Biden administration. We have two years productive. of Hunter Biden laptop investigations yeah. when there is no laptop. Yeah. Drift Glass, you want to talk about Andrew Sullivan for just a minute. I would like to talk about Andrew Sullivan for just a minute, Blue Gal. If I run over an hour, you just let me know. <laughs> and uh, because I used to have a regular feature. Uh, on my blog called Stupid Shit Andrew, Andrew Sullivan Says, because Andrew Sullivan says stupid shit all the time. Um, and he was such a big, dumb target. And he was so... But he, you know, then then he moved to Substack and disappeared, and we were all grateful for it. Well, baby, he's back. <laughs> um, the, man who quit, the man who quit blogging, because he was done with all that, uh, he's back. But he's back because... And here, this is the important point. He's back because his... Um, his obsession with race, his, um, remember this is the, 
the America's most prominent white, gay, Catholic, Tory, conservative, libertarian phrenologist who has been obsessed with race and race uh, measuring IQ and measuring body parts for 20 years, at least 20 years. And he has uh, grown ever more monomaniacally focused on race and race theory and how important it is and how liberals are wrecking everything over the last five years or so. Um, This is a guy who um, quit New York Magazine or he was fired or they reached a mutual agreement. I don't know what it was, uh, largely because, well, in my humble opinion, nobody wanted to eat lunch with a race-obsessed crackpot. So (laughs) out the door he went. Um, Then he went on a sub stack where all weirdos go. Um, But and there, there's some still, good sub stacks, but oh, no, no, there's so there, there's good stuff there. Uh, but it really is. I don't want to deal with any editors at all. Uh. I just want to <laughs> let my fucking racist freak flag fly and have subscribers pay me a lot of money for doing so. Mm-hmm. Um, now, remember, Andrew Sullivan promised he would go away. <laughs> this is <laughs> another just, one. And he won't go, go away. away. He just fucking won't go away. And people keep offering him jobs every time he pops his head up and then he gets mad and quits those. Um, but the reason I know what Andrew Sullivan wrote this week is because the New York Post, um, he, he has traveled the ideological distance from the New York New Yorker magazine to the New York Post in one year. Mm. New York Post reprinted his article, which was then reprinted with permission by Fox News. And the Let article- the circle be unbroken. <laughs> the article is um, <laughs> remarkable. I mean, it is, it is a straight up wake up white people tirade Christ. against the left. Um, and what makes it really art, I should t- take screenshots of this, is it's as a piece of text, it is woven between um, send your money to wingnut grifter ads. And I'm quoting <laughs> one now with misspellings in them, which makes it really good oh art. Oh, my God. Uh, all, all caps, Callista and Newt Gingrich fighting critical race theory. Here's who's <laughs> leading the charge, <laughs> ADN instead of and, and how you can help. Then ADN? <laughs> ADN, because they can't instead spell of and, and. They can't yeah. spell, they can't yeah. type. Oh, my God. Um, the article is led by a Fox News video. Is this uh, on Fox Nation or is this on FoxNews.com? This FoxNews.com. Oh, you my God. You can look it up. Um, and and it's led by a video from CPAC of uh, octogenarian hysterics about critical race theory. Um, and there's another um, video from Fox and there's a Laura Ingram thing. So seeded throughout his article, which didn't have any of this in it, is Fox News has found – that Andrew Sullivan's obsession, the racist obsession with critical race theory and hating the left fits their agenda perfectly. Oh, sure. So now he's and a friend of And they can place their ads around it. Yes, of course. And who but uh, and who, uh, but Rod Dreher, the thoroughly unbalanced Rod Dreher in the American Conservative has now an article called Defending Andrew Sullivan and the very publicly disgraced Kevin Williamson, who now writes for America's most respected journal of white supremacy, the... <laughs> Which uh, one is that? The National uh, National Review <laughs> uh, sees Andrew Sullivan as a fellow victim of free market capitalism, mm-hmm. <laughs> having been fired, which you're never supposed to do for conservatives. The ritual denunciation and mow mowing of for, of the former magazine editors. So everyone's on board on the right again with Andrew Sullivan swinging back into action to fight the liberals, and he and he just goes there. Um, Yes, some liberal critiques of Fox News are warranted and well taken. But really, really, the problem is, and I I had a little fun with writing because I the real villains are the decadent left in their enclaves on the coast is are not dead and may well mount what amounts to a fifth column. And then I write, oh, I'm sorry, that's my mistake. That was Andrew Sullivan slagging people like us 20 fucking years ago. Mm -hmm. Here's Andrew Sullivan today. We know what's we all know it's happened. The elites increasingly sequestered within one political party and one media monoculture educated by colleges and private schools that have become hermetically sealed against any non-left dissent have had a social justice reckoning these past few years, and they've been ideologically transformed with countless cascading consequences. Why Why do you think all of the people who went to school and learned actual facts wound up in one party? I don't know. Andrew. I don't know. But there's no money to be made agreeing with those folks. <sighs> then he takes a shot at his former friend, Ta-Nehisi Coates, and, and says, you know, he's a great writer. But but his rhetoric blinded me to the fact that his- uh, his that he has a radical agenda. He's radical. It's very radical. <laughs> uh, then he sprinkles in some uh, Reverend Wright references for, <laughs> the old, for the old school haters. Uh, and then he just goes all there about how 
It's all horrible. It's the greatest radicalization of the elites since the 1960s, Blue Gal. Mm-hmm. And is it isn't coming from the and ground? And Andrew Sullivan isn't a well-educated elite. No, of course not. <laughs> Neither is J.D. Vance, honey. Yeah, Um, yeah. This isn't coming from the ground up. It's being imposed ruthlessly from above, marshaled with a fusillade of constant MSM propaganda, and its victims are often the poor, the black, and the brown. Uh It nearly lost the Democrats the last election. Uh Yeah. Once again, Donald Trump, and all of this started in 2015, by the way. He He says it very clearly. He doesn't mention Donald Trump. No, no, no. There's no mention of Donald Trump. There's no mention of the Republican Party. There's no mention of anything going on. No mention of the history of the GOP. No no No. mention of Gingrich. Just like Scott Reeder. The entire history of everything that happened prior to today is gone. The oppressive left hurting America. The oppressive left that caused all these problems. That caused (laughs) Donald Trump to be elected. It's a backlash (laughs) against the oppressive left, which all began in 2015. Um, That's the cause of all this. And I, I finish your with class. We need it, to do a news roundup. But get, what what was your summation of? The Andy summation Jones? is there's nothing screams late stage British imperialism louder <laughs> than the sight of America's most prominent white gay Catholic Tory conservative libertarian phrenologist single mindedly using every tool at his disposal to try to invade and colonize a yeah. conversation that threatens his hardwired belief in his own aristocratic superiority. Yeah, and he's colonizing a conversation that isn't happening anywhere else but his substack. Well, yeah, of course not. But, <laughs> so, but it's, no, it's happening at, at CPAC. At Fox so that, News and CPAC, yes, places. that's right. That's right. And so that's he has right. been, he's okay. being welcomed back to the Fox News universe from the sure, spawn. Sure, and that's the whole purpose. It's exactly the same thing that's happening with Megyn Kelly. It's like, what can I say to get my notch mm-hmm. back in a chair at Fox? Please, yeah. Belmar, okay. please put me back on the TV. Let's do a news roundup. Yeah, let's do that. After you, Dave. The Biden continues. The Biden administration's 2021 child tax credit is being dispersed starting yesterday. That's right. This this week, this month, and the checks are going out. Senate Democrats revealed a $3.5 trillion plan to invest in health care, climate change, and more. The measure, which would include money to address climate change, expand Medicaid, Medicare, and fulfill other Democratic priorities, is intended to deliver on President Biden's economic proposal. If we pass this, this is the most profound change to help American families and generations, says Chuck Schumer, Senate Majority Leader. And if I could interrupt for a minute, uh, people complaining about Chuck Schumer being Majority Leader and wanting to put someone else in there, Mm -hmm. particularly uh, Amy Klobuchar. Yeah. I had to remind people that good senators with good ideas don't want to be Majority leader. No. It is an administrative, thankless job mm-hmm. where you do fundraising and committee assignments. And that's it's all administration all day long. It's the it's the elected equivalent of being the a DNC. You're a principal. Chair. Right. You, you You're get, the principal of the school. You take all the incoming fire. And, right. You know. And there's a lot of very talented senators who absolutely do not want that job. Yes. So I, I appreciate that you you love a certain senator and you think, oh, Elizabeth Warren would be great as majority leader, as if it's a crown or something. Right. That we would love to give a crown to Elizabeth Warren. I love that. I'd, I'd love but to- I don't want her sitting behind a desk on the phone all day negotiating who's going to be on which committees and no. who's going to go to which fundraisers and how <laughs> who has to talk to which lobbyists. It's it's it is an administrative job for someone who is not an idea rock star. Okay. That's what it is. So please. All right. Uh, The Trump justice department attempted to seize Washington post reporters, email data one day, one day before Bill Barr left office. Yep. Yep. We were, you know, he he resigned on principal drift glass. Yeah. No, he resigned on a Tuesday blue game. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just ahead of the mob. Senate majority leader, Chuck Schumer, speaking of, says he'll propose the federal decriminalization of marijuana. Ever heard of it? Schumer will offer draft legislation to remove marijuana from the list of controlled substances and begin regulating and taxing. Our Senator Durbin was on TV Thursday morning saying that it was crazy to have marijuana illegal at the federal level when you can buy it illegally here in Illinois. Buy it legally. On, buy it legally here in Illinois on any street corner. He said this because Senator Durbin is old and so are his cliches. And I wrote a post on this. You did. Uh, Bank of America is really looking forward to packaging bank product for marijuana entrepreneurs. Yes. Because 
credit card sales of pot <laughs> yeah. are going to generate a lot of income a for Bank of, of income. America. Just think of the Doritos. Think of think of <laughs> think of the pizza sales you can get. Just think right. of it. Yeah, yeah. If you can charge them, if you right. can charge pot. And right now you can't. You have to take cash to the dispensary. That's right. And um, the other thing that came out uh, this week, there's a study showing property values rose $17,113 more in states where recreational marijuana <laughs> is legal. And you pointed out, Jeff Glass, it's those marijuana entrepreneurs needing to stash their cash someplace. Well, just they need to invest it someplace. They, they, yeah. don't, they don't need to stash it because it's legal as far as right. they can't put it in a bank. So right. They, have to, they, have they to can't buy put it in a it. bank, so they're buying a house. Right. Yeah. And so it's increasing property values. To have marijuana dispensaries in your town mm-hmm. increases your property values. Um, and so, yes, uh, this is not for you know, Cheech and Chong. Well, <laughs> this, this is, is for Bank of America and, I, and the property values. And what I'd like to and say And the that, tax coffers of these states that have legalized it. Yeah. I, yeah. I would like to say that it was primarily because they want to get people out of jail who've been in jail on bullshit. Well, and that is charges. in the bill. That but is in the bill. Th- that, yeah. that was not the primary driver. No. Let's be honest. That is not the primary. It's, it's the shmoney. It's, it, it is a enormously good side effect of this law. But it's bullshit, and everyone knows it's bullshit. And it's because it's money. Absolutely true. It's money. Yep. Tennessee has decided it likes the Dark Ages and doesn't want to leave. So this week, due to pressure from Republican lawmakers, Tennessee abandoned all vaccine outreach to minors, not just for COVID-19. A state vaccine expert who was doing her job got fired. For doing her job. For doing her job. Um, Texas Democrats have once again been forced to flee the state in order to delay a GOP-backed voter registra- uh, voter restrictions. They are currently in Washington, D.C., pleading with the Congress for help. Trump lawyers might be penalized over a Michigan election lawsuit. This was off the charts. Yeah. The <laughs> sanction hearing for uh, Trump's lawyers in Michigan, um, Lynn Wood and Sidney Powell. Yeah. And several others. One of them, one of the attorneys for the attorneys started crying <laughs> during the hearing. Yeah. Lynn Wood is probably going to jail. I would he, hope so. Um, the judge very specifically said, do not record or rebroadcast this Zoom meeting. Uh, there were reporters who were invited to the Zoom meeting to cover it. And many live tweeted it. A couple of them live tweeted it, which if you get a chance, Kraken sanctions is what you can look up the cra- yeah. kraken lawyers yeah it was a circus and one one of the defendants said i don't know why you're wasting your time judge on this fake awful you know waste of time case mm-hmm. against us and uh linwood went out and did exactly what the judge told her him not to do uh-huh. and put up a clip of the Zoom meeting on social media right after the, the hearing. Um, and what the uh, city of Detroit, who is a plaintiff in this wants is um, number one, they they're fundraising off of this. They want, they want damages, financial damages to, as a deterrent for other crazy lawyers who might try to sue, you know, districts over fake news. That is election. Oh, it's election fraud. We need, we're going to file a lawsuit and there's no evidence. Yeah. And they couldn't find any evidence. And Lynn Wood kept saying, I didn't do this. I don't have my name on any of these documents. They just asked me for consultation. And I that's why I, my names were on the document. I'm just, I'm just a, a coffee boy just for the insurrection. Volunteer co- and yeah. as Charlie yeah. Pierce pointed out, not using these words, yeah. um, the court reporter went all Sister Mary Elephant on him. She did. <clears throat> Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I can't do my job if you're all talking over each other. So please, everybody, shut up and talk in order. When the judge tells you to talk. And, you know, that's uh, and, the other thing is yeah. they were yelling at the judge. Yeah. Which is always a good strategy. Always a good always. idea. And then also shitting on the judge mm-hmm. before she's made a decision after the hearing. <laughs> Go on well, social media and shit on the judge. And these are basically insurrectionists in suits because their yes, whole are. is fuck you. I can do whatever I want. I don't obey any law. I'm not subject to any rules. Right. I can right. say whatever the fuck I want, and you can't touch me because I'm on Donald Trump's side, and Donald Trump is, you know, is a God go- and Jesus. Yes. He's coming yes. back, baby. He's coming back. Yeah. Um, but he's not. And in a new book, two Washington Post reporters 
Carol Ennig and Philip Rucker write that General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, likened Donald Trump's effort to hold on to power after the 2020 election to Adolf Hitler, saying the president was preaching the, quote, gospel of the Fuhrer with his lies about the election being stolen and that Trump had led the country to the brink of its own, quote, Reichstag moment, unquote. In response, Trump attacked General Milley yet again, this time in a more than 400-word rant at his microblog, which yeah. he doesn't blog anymore, but he issues statements at his website, uh-huh. uh, denying that he had ever, quote, threatened or spoke about to anyone a coup of our government, calling the notion so ridiculous, so you know that it definitely happened. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, according to one of the other 175 new books about Trump that dropped this week, <laughs> Trump said that whoever leaked information about his time in the White House bunker last year should be, quote unquote, executed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two top House Democrats on Wednesday launched an investigation into whether cyber ninjas, one of the private companies hired by Arizona Republicans to, quote unquote, audit millions of ballots cast during the 2020 election, is working to, quote, Reverse the result of a free and fair election for partisan gain. You think? You think? House Oversight Chairwoman Carolyn Maloney, Democrat of New York, and Representative Jamie Raskin, who you may remember from the impeachment trial of Donald Trump, Democrat of Maryland, uh, who uh, he leads a House Civil Rights Subcommittee, have asked the firm's CEO to send them a whole bunch of documents related to the audit, including information about who is paying for it. Now, I think the taxpayers of Arizona are paying for it through the uh, Senate chairman, uh, yeah. Republican. But, uh, yeah, let's get some in, let's get some daylight on that. Let's throw a little daylight see what happens. Maybe we can hold it up to ultraviolet light and see if there's, <laughs> there's some crazy <laughs> going on in there. Yeah. Uh, Mike Lindell, Mr. My Pillow, once again has revised the date of the apocalypse. Uh, he's saying that, no, nah, maybe not August for Trump's triumphant return to power. Um because that's what you do when you run a cult. You just keep revising the date when the Messiah will show up. Former Trump campaign manager or advisor, legal advisor, yeah. right? She's the one standing behind Rudy as uh. his uh, hair dye melted down his face. Mm-hmm. Jenna Ellis. She has quit the GOP in protest, Drift Glass. Mm-hmm. Not for the reasons you usually hear. Instead, Ms. Ellis is mad that the Republican National Committee is not more batshit crazy and more willing to scream about the big steal 24-7. So she's quitting, and here's the quote, until the party decides that it wants to be conservative again, unquote. Womp womp. <laughs> All right, this local news story, you, you have in our notes, stop me if I go over an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Why it. don't you do your own podcast on I this? think that's a good idea. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a very interesting story. <clears throat> it's about how uh, Governor Hedge yeah. Fund screwed us, but I'll do a whole separate thing on it. Well, and uh, let me just read the read our notes for our, for our listeners. Yeah, uh, there's a story about how Governor Hedge Fund, the former Republican governor Bruce Rauner, cost the state of Illinois nearly 120,000 jobs during the pandemic. Uh, it is a workforce development story about a job sharing provision that the Democratic governor before Governor Hedge Fund Pat Quinn put into place, and if it had been con- continued and implemented by the Republican governor, it would have saved 120,000 jobs during the pandemic. Yeah. But the, Governor Hedge Fund didn't give it any attention or any funding. Oh, yeah. Gave the money back. And gave the money I back. Think, there was money set aside so the people who had their hours cut or were sharing a job with somebody could have the remainder of those hours made up with unemployment, unemployment money. money. Yeah. So if you, if you suddenly found your hours cut from 40 hours to 20, or you and someone else were, were, were being kept on payroll by having you share a job, unemployment would pay for the balance of your paycheck, which is a great idea Mm -hmm. and would have uh, preserved nearly 120,000 jobs during the pandemic. But um, Governor Hedge Fund decided- Bruce Rauner returned the money. He he, he said, fuck it, I'm not doing it and had to return the money. Now, um, J.B. Pritzker should have done this, but honestly, um, he was very busy that first year undoing a lot of the shit Rauner did, like doing a budget Mm -hmm. and trying to get- competent people back in the state government. So I, I, yeah, he should have done it. Getting a budget after two years of no budget is a lot of work. Yeah. Yes. But this was, uh, this was not, this is a, a, an omission on his part. Right. Not doing this is Republican orthodoxy. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. using the government to help people is what Republicans believe in. And Governor Hedge Fund, who funds things like the Illinois Policy Institute, definitely believed that government should not be used to help 
Illinoisians, which is why he refused to do a budget for two years because he wanted to break the union. That's the only reason he did State it. State unions, yeah. yeah. We also and had, we had another COVID cluster uh, in Springfield. We did. This week, right? Do you want to talk about it or do you want me to talk about oh, it? Oh, go right ahead. It's, it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good story. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's got a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, we had another COVID-19 cluster here in Springfield at a local senior center, but this time the story doesn't end with bodies being taken to the morgue. Instead, because most of the residents are vaccinated, there have been zero deaths. Uh, a few people were infected, but their symptoms were mild. Only one required hospitalization. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it it worked out okay because vaccines people. Because vaccines people. Because the one thing that Tennessee won't do is the one thing that we are doing in Illinois uh, harder and fast, as fast as we possibly get. Now, we're reaching the threshold. We're reaching the moron threshold where... There's just 70%. people left. If we get to 70%, we yeah. can't, you know, make morons go and mm-hmm. get that shot. Uh, anyway, we love you. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, Blue Gal. Thank you, Drift Class. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's internet kitty is a puppy, Zadie. Aww. Zadie is a Maltese puppy who steals socks and shoes. She sorts the shoes into one of two hiding spots. She separates the pairs of shoes and puts one in one spot and one in the other. And when she makes mistakes and she gets scolded, she will bring you a missing sock as a peace offering. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> her, her human says she's adorable and not very spoiled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in this picture, she is posing next to a gourmet coffee that is taller than she is oh. for sizing purposes. So you know how small she is. And of course, Zadie eats freshly poured dog food, our fake sponsor. Freshly poured puppy food, I should say. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Zadie at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag jail to joy. Why is joy still in office? I, I think it's the board. The board it. only the board can fire him, and they haven't done it yet. The post office board. They need to fire him they, immediately. I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Today's a good day to fire him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website proleftpod.com for details. I just want to remind everybody, we do not record or sell your name and address to anybody. That you, you know can of. Give, you mm-hmm. can give five bucks one time. You can give five bucks a month. You can give any way you want. There's PayPal, Patreon, buy me a coffee, which goes through Stripe. Um, you have lots of options. You can mail us a check. There's our mm-hmm. address at our website. Uh, any way you want to do it. Uh, we're glad to hear from you. And now, uh you may get a letter from Joe Biden, but that's not from us. That We didn't sell your list <laughs> we to Joe Biden. We did not sell your, to God. your name and address to Joe Biden. No. no, no. <laughs> All of it is there at our website, proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. Thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have decided against joining the Shocking Books About Donald Trump book club. <laughs> Thank you, Drift Glass. I have one thing to ask, Blue Gal. Yeah. Uh, do you know where Sadie's person lives? In what state? No. Okay. Because if if they lived by the seashore, mm-hmm. then Sadie steals and sorts shoes and socks by the seashore. Would be a perfect tongue twister, wouldn't, wouldn't it, it? Though, would yeah. it? just that just occurred to me because that's the kind of extra value that we offer our listeners See? for their patron value. Mm-hmm. Should have saved Thank that you. for. For uh, Pro Left After Dark, the uh, subscription <laughs> podcast, but I just can't keep my mouth our shut. Our sub stack. Yeah. yeah, our sub stack. <laughs> at, at, at the sub stack to the end of Sadie Steele's. So. On sub stack. On yes, sub stack. Perfect. Go. Perfect. Thank you, darling. 
Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.